ನಮಸ್ತೇಭ್ಯ ಓಂ ಅಸತೋ ಮಾ ಸದ್ಗಮಯ ತಮಸೋ ಮಾ ಜ್ಯೋತಿರ್ಗಮಯ ಮೃತ್ಯೋರ್ಮಾ ಮೃತಂಗಮಯ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಪೂಜನೀಯ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಿಜಿ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆಪರ್ಚುನಿಟಿ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ಟು ದ ತರ್ಟೀನ್ತ್ ಆಶ್ರವಿದ್ಯ ಇನ್ ದ ಲಾಜಿಕಲ್ ಕಾನ್ಫರೆನ್ಸ್ I am honored and grateful to be speaking at this conference. Welcome to the session on What is Swadharma? Finding Swadharma in a Modern Individualistic Society. This is the agenda. We will start with an introduction. We will we'll go into why we are exploring the idea of Swadharma. <clears throat> and we get into what our Shastras say about Dharma and Swadharma. we will discuss a little bit about individualistic societies and we'll spend some time on finding swadharma in such individualistic societies we will end up with some of the caution to watch out for while doing so now what are the challenges why do we even discuss about what is swadharma some of the common question that one asks whoever it is which our background they are from whatever profession they may be in or whatever life sta- life whatever stage in life they may be at some of the questions the most imp- one of the most important questions is what is the right thing to do from from as a student you know is studying the right thing to do is spend is learning engaging in sports is the right thing to do as an employee what is the right thing to do in more fancy words more more um software techy world like you know they they talk about how do you, what are the priorities what are the key responsibilities what are the krs and okrs and and that align with your business priorities and in overall like wherever we go whatever we do this is this is the question that we we face what is the right thing to do and second am i doing the right thing like do i know what is the right thing and am i doing the right thing and whatever i am doing is is this moral because why why am i asking this question because i want to know is this moral is this ethical is this legal um, we are constantly like uh, faced with this dilemma right what am i doing is this right what am i doing is this is correct what am i doing it whether it's moral ethical or even is is it legal or illegal and the question follows is like you know why should i be doing this depending on the context the answers are like you know if you're doing the right thing if 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 you're a student if you do the right thing you're going to you want you want to learn better you want to you want to get uh, you can study well and you, all those things if you're at work and you do the right thing then of course you know you're looking at rewards and promotions and what not similarly what happens that when the question comes in you know what happens if i don't do the right thing right i, I may not get a good grade i may fail in my subject i may not learn well i may not get my promotion i may not get my rewards and depending on how bad i did what how what it what i did i may even face some consequences right so what happens if i don't do the right thing <clears throat> these are all some of the questions irrespective of who we are we face and this is where we look into the idea of what dharma is and what swadharma is and and we seek answers from our shastras looking into dharma and swadharma now dharma is one of the um, one of the sanskrit terms that is not easily translatable into other languages it is commonly translated into religion which is which is very restrictive but it's more than that and and for this for the purpose of the conversations we'll use the term dharma and we'll use the term swadharma to indicate what is one's dharma what is one's dharma what is my dharma is my swadharma and we will look into what dharma shastra say for for this talk we will look deeper into what bhagavad gita has got to say what mahabharata and manushmati these three texts say about what swadharma is how to find one swadharma now as a summary before we get into details on these three things this is this is what our dharma shastra say in general what our dharma shastra is all about and and what has been what is the understanding what 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 has been our common understanding of what dharma shastra say 
we don't have a fixed rule we don't have a single book that says this is all the right thing to do these are all the wrong things to do we don't have so so as to say it's commandments book right we have shruti and smriti we know that we consider shruti shrutis are aparishaya and and they are eternal and smritis are in our collective memory our itihasas and dharma shastras are most of the dharma shastras fall under smriti be bhagavad gita or mahabharata or, or manushruti and other smritis fall under the collect the corpus of smritis shrutis refer to the vedas the four vedas while shruti shruti is always the has, has, has always been the same what smritis that we use are are which which smritis are of prominence that has been continuously evolving right uh, manushmriti it has been like uh, it has been it has been quoted to be the one of the one of the uh, the deep smriti but however we do have uh, ton, tons of other smritis so shandilya smriti parashara smriti yakmila smriti and more smritis like that so the, the the idea of like you know uh, smriti is changing with the time continuously evolving is commonly accepted and which smriti that follow it it all depends on the desha kala vartamana and overall if you look at our our text our society had been largely responsibilities based what is all about one's duties and one's responsibilities while accommodating for all aspects of human pursuits right our shastras understand and we do have shastras for desire as well we do we do have shastras for um uh, politics and econ- economics as well we have we have we have other other shastras talking about other various various uh, cultural pursuits right we have artha shastra kama shastra and shilpa shastra and what what variety of whole bunch of shastras right so overall it has been accommodating all pursuits of human human life eventually all of them lead to the goal of moksha or the liberation when when it comes to one's responsibilities if you look at if you put if if you look at this concentric circles here the responsibilities and and one's commitments to it starts with the the universe that one's part of and what what one has to do towards one's country one's community one's family and one's own moksha if you are looking from the pursuits of uh, uh, human pursuits point of view purusharthas point of view the alignment is dharma provides the alignment within the construct of dharma within the alignment of dharma how to earn money how, how to uh, earn lawfully uh, pursue artha how to pursue kama desire all eventually lead towards moksha the jastras also understand that we are or we are we are some total of three gunas sattva rajas and tamas and we do have these gunas playing uh, or taking prominence at various times you know depending on what we are at what we are doing and on on on, on you all around the same time the gunas also drive the type of actions that we do right when 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 when, when when sattva guna is prominent then what one tends to do when on tamas is prominent what one tends to do and things like that let's go into what bhagavad gita has got to say about dharma and swadharma swadharma particularly now it's a common understanding it's a very simplistic understanding is that bhagavad gita is all about duties to this duties right do your action don't worry about the result don't worry about without worrying about the fruits of the result and it's a very popular and, and it, that's a very common understanding and given the context and you know when arjuna questions oh, what am i doing do i have to kill my relatives do i have to give my gurus what am i going to gain what am i going to gain uh, is it worth is it worth is, is the victory worth and all those things then lord krishna then sit, sits him down and then discusses all these things talks him talks him through these things while explaining about you know what how how one should do one's responsibilities he also explains that who is the doer is is the, is the really is the person who is doing is the doer what is happening uh, what's atma and you know all those things that he discusses but the key things that he goes about is like you know as far as one is concerned one has got the right only for one's responsibilities not for the not for the outcomes of that one and when it comes to responsibilities you know what is how how to go about how to do that one 
and he also talks about uh, how they are tied to the varnas and, and how varnas are decided and uh, I'll, I'll quote you like three three uh, important shlokas here but of course you know there's a lot more to that the the, the most important one and most common one are is karma nyava adhikaraste mafalesu kadachana this is often off, um, off quoted and 2.47 your right is for the action alone never for the results do not become the agent of the results of action may you not have any inclination for inaction and lord krishna also explains that doing one's own duty even if it is defective is better than doing another's duty well performed in 3.35 he goes on saying that you know doing one's swadharma one's duties even incomplete or even defective is better than doing duties of somebody else and he also says death is better while engaged in one's own duty another duty is fraught with fear he goes further he he, he says how varnas came about in 4.13 chaturvanya and maya srashtan guna karma Vibhaga, Vibhaga, Vibhaga the four varnas have been created by me through a classification of the gunas and duties even though i am the agent of that classification or the, of the act of classification still know me to be a non-agent and changeless he further goes on saying that those things that indeed are made of the guna sattva and those that are made of rajas and tamas know them to have sprung from me alone however i am not in them they are in me lord krishna also goes about you know talks so further in 1841 he says o scorcher of enemies the duties of the brahmanas the kshatriyas and the vaishyas and as also of the sudras have been fully classified according to the gunas born from nature that is it's from one's gunas not from necessarily from one's birth and he, he he goes on and on in some of some of the important texts that I'm quoting here and you know in 1848 oh son of Kunti one should not give up the duty to which one is born even though even though it be faulty for for all undertakings are surrounded with evil as fire is with smoke but Lord Krishna also gives us the comfort right whenever there's a decline of one decline in virtue and dharma then he will manifest yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata abhyuktana madharmasya tadatma tadatmanan srajam yaham so and he also goes and saying like you know what is the best way to reach him in 9.34 he says having your mind fixed on me be devoted to me sacrifice to me and bow down to me further the ultimate act of surrender, he goes on in 1866, Do not worry, <clears throat> do not grieve. In summary, Bhagavad Gita, it's all about one's responsibilities and doing one's responsibilities more important and doing one's responsibilities even defective is better than doing someone else's work better and the responsibilities duties as Vadharma is determined by the Varna which is again determined by one's Guna and Karma one's actions and one's virtues now let's look into what Mahabharata has got to say uh, in about Dharma and Swadharma Mahabharata being the Dharma Shastra and also called the fifth Veda goes on and on about Dharma and when it comes to the idea of Swadharma alone you could find more than 150 references to the word Swadharma in various conjugates right I'm, I'm referring I'm, I, I took I took the um, talking to the critical edition of Mahabharata and among these references more than 70 are coming from the, the Shanti Parvan, Anushasana Parvan, uh, when, where Pandavas, mostly Yudhishthira talking to Bhishma in the deathbed after the war is all over. Such, such increased or such these references show you, show the importance of 
the concept of swadharma the idea of dharma and swadharma and we can see throughout the throughout the itihasa there are discussions happening enumerating uh, emphasizing discussing and debating about uh, the idea of dharma and swadharma on and on right and uh, some of some of them some of them are coming like these discussions are coming from various people various contexts forests or you know palaces um, to begin with Naimisharanya and you know wherever the Pandavas were going on pilgrimage or one of Aranya or whatnot. <clears throat> Some of the discussions are very interesting. For example, Hidimba is talking about uh, Swadharma. She's explaining what is not her Swadharma. And you see you see snakes and you see Yaksha talking about it. And uh, you, you, you know Narada and Hanuman emphasizing at various points. And then uh, of course uh, Bhishmacharya talking on and on in Shanti Parvan and Anshashana Parvan. And you look at the one to these Parvans, there are about 20,000, there are about 19,500 verses. One fifth, almost one fifth of the entire, entire Yutihasa in these two chapters. And then in Shanti Parvan it goes, uh, Bhishmacharya goes into what is Rajadharma, what is the Dharma of the king, what is Apadharma Parvan, what happens in, in terms of calamities and war, and what is Moksha Dharma Parvan, you know, what are the ways towards liberation. Now, um, some of the we will talk into some of the interesting uh, interesting conversations and what is the high level summary of these discussions, and we will go into uh, in, you know some some of the generic generic pattern and some of the exceptions to what what is the common understanding of what Swadharma is according to Mahabharata in the next slide. If you look into this, largely uh, this one Swadharma is tied to one Suvarna, right? You, t you see a lot of discussions about, you know, um, hey, it is not my dharma, it is not my swadharma. Like Bhishma fights, her. Bhishma is, is enraged. Bhishma goes and fights with, uh, uh, Bhishma goes and uh, screams at uh, <clears throat> Yudhishthira. Like, you know, it is not uh, Kshatriya, Kshatriya dharma to take it, like, you know, let's go fight and things like that. Um, some sometimes like you know uh, draupadi will say uh, it is not my dharma like particularly in in in, in Dra um, draupadi uh, her, uh, the one the, the episode where she gets abducted she says like you know it's not my dharma to speak on you know things like that but if you look at it right largely large most of the text most of the uh, the common understanding is that that one swadharma is determined by one's one's uh, varna uh, the conversations um like Sutta, Sutta talking about in very early on and Hanuman talking to Bhima, they all emphasize that. Bhishmacharya in Shanti Parvan and Anshashik Parvan, he talks about that. But there are also exceptions. There are also cases where specifically like, you know, uh, the Varna is, Varna is discussed to be not, be not by birth, but something else to that, right? For example, um, Hunter talking to Kaushika. Kaushika is this angry Brahmin who gets angry at the, at the household lady and then she refers to him into a to a to a hunter and then he goes to the and he goes and has a long long discussions with the hunter and hunter goes on and on about what is dharma and all those things in spite of his uh, in spite of his profession right and there's also seem to be an anticipation to a decline in dharma if you look at it like let's talk into some some key key verses and and the texts are on that one <coughs> uh, Some examples here, right? Like um, uh, Sutta, sorry, Hanuman. Hanuman says to Bhiman here, Swadharmasta Kriyavanto Jana Sarita Yuge Bhavan. And uh, Bhishma talking, talk Bhishma uh, advising Yudhishthira to continue to go on with this Rajya Paripalana, not, not, not to uh, renunciate, right? Sudharmam chara dharmanya yata sastram yata vidihi. That's like according to the shastras, you go follow that. Some of the exceptions also we find, right? Like in particularly in, in the uh, episode of Yaksha Prashna, um, when Yudhishthira and Yaksha having this uh, conversation, <clears throat> The Pandava brothers go in search of water one by one, and then they are they are they are uh, they find a lake. They they go in the reverse order. Sahadeva goes first. He's, he's stopped by a crane, and then he doesn't listen to the crane. He he, he drinks from the water. He dies. One by one, one goes. 
finally when Yudhishthira goes, he sees all his brothers are dead and then he has this conversation and the extra has series of questions and in these questions that like, you know, uh, finally uh, he's, the extra is happy with his answers and allows him to uh, um, bring back one and then he brings back Sahadeva, sorry, Nakula. And then uh, when asked like why why you picked not uh, not not Arjuna or Bhima, then he says like you know like like I am for my mother. Uh, <coughs> let um, Madri's Madri's son one at least one should be revived and appreciating his is um, is right is virtue is rightfulness. <coughs> Daksha brings back everybody right. Now he has these questions right like you know uh, he has this question. Brahmana ko bhaved rajan vedyam kim chedishtra he asked this question uh, who is brahmana or who is right and uh, he has a series of questions like that and, and what is who is a brahmana and specifically he asked this question right uh, what what is what is this swadharma what is the eternal duty uh, what is the eternal duty? He also asked, like, you know, uh, what patience, what is a burial ablution, what is charity, all these kind of questions. And then Yudhishthira, when asked about, like, you know, who, and then who is a Brahmana and what should be known and all those things, right? Then Yudhishthira says, it, this is an important question, and it, this is, this is the, this is the, uh, Verse 77 in the excerpt Prashna, but I, I, yeah. What had steadiness been said by the Rishis to be, and what patience, what also is royal ablution, and what is charity? Yudhishthira answers, steadiness consists in one staying in one's own religion, Swadharma, and true patience consists in subjugation of the senses. The, 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 then also asked, who is a Brahmana, and what should be known by that speech? I, I infer thee to be highly intelligent. Yudhishthira says, it is asserted by the wise in whom are seen truth, charity, forgiveness, good conduct, benevolence, observance of the rights of his order and mercy is a Brahman, right? And it's so you can see that it's not is indicating that it is not necessarily by the birth, but more of conduct. But we in, in Mahabharata, we also see an anticipation to a decline in Dharma. Particularly, Markandeya at Yudhishthira talks about the, when when Yudhishthira asks a question on like you know what are these yugas and you know, how, how are those, then he talks about what's going to happen with with every duga a leg of dharma is being gone and you know things like that. So Mahabharata overall the idea of swadharma is tied to the varnas, and the idea of varna <clears throat> in some places we see and in most places we see that it is tied to one's birth, but we also see exceptions. The hunter, the, the discussions between Hunter and Kaushika is interesting because Hunter talks a lot about Dharma. It's in, it's inter interesting. You no, know, he he clearly says that <coughs> I understand. <coughs> na swadharma uh, swadharma iti kritva tu na tejami dujotama. He says I I know what my swadharma is and I will not renounce that. I will not let it go. Even though it is about like you know hunting and killing and selling meat and whatnot, he and he clearly understands what his swadharma is and he he wants to adhere to that. And he he gives examples. He gives reference to how Lord Janaka is adhering to that and how Janaka would would um, Janaka's citizens are following that and all those things. What's important to note is that that across like across the strata of the society, the idea of swadharma. And people who who talk about swadharma, we find examples, right? Whether within within the fold, within the varnas, different varnas or whatnot. And and that is that is the high level summary of what Mahabharata has got to say uh, about swadharma. Now, let's go to uh, let's go to Manushmatiyan. Uh, the idea of uh, varnas. And, and what what <clears throat> what Manuswati has got to say about Swadharma. <clears throat> it is clear with according to Manuswati, it's clear that uh, varnas are desired statically. It was it was created by it was just by the creators, and uh, it was created for the welfare of the 
Lokare, Lokanam to Vivridhyartham, for the welfare, for the, for the growth. And there are also the responsibility to strongly tied to one's, one's uh, Varna, right? It clearly says, like, you know, uh, what a Brahmana has to do, what a Kratriya has to do, Adhyapana, Adhyapanam, Adhyayan, Yajanam, 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 Tata. Uh, do, learning, teaching, doing anyas are, are the responsibility of Brahmana. Prajanam, Rakshinam, Dhanamidya, dana, 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 Dhyanameva Chaya. Protecting, protecting the citizens, giving Dana. Those are all responsible, responsibilities of the Chatriyas. Manushmati is most, most clear about the law of karma and how law of karma is tied to all, all the actions are tied to the creation itself and Manushmati is very clear about the punishments right like you see entire chapters going into uh, what are the responsibilities of the king what are the responsibilities of the grihastha what are the responsibilities of the hermit and it also talks about what happens uh, during during when 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 the decline of dharma and all those things they go about like various aspects of civil and law like you know punishments and all those things but in, in Manushmati it's very clear about it's a strong a tie between one's varna and one's varna is based on one's birth and <clears throat> based on one's varna what the responsibilities they are different now you can see a clear differentiation between what Mahavad Gita the standpoint on on how varna is determined and overall what Mahabharata has got to say and how Manushmati is differing right like here in these three itself you can see uh, more rigid uh, a, a differentiation uh, a change in how uh, these were enforced or these were uh, uh, these were elucidated right Bhagavad Gita being not being very very uh, uh, Krishna Lord Krishna saying that it's all based on one's gunan duties Bhagavad Gita, Mahabharata in various places you see it's tied to one's birth versus one's conduct and here in Manushmati is strongly tied to one's birth and and Banaspiti also goes a lot about uh, uh, various aspects of like you know various roles, various responsibilities, various stages of life, um, and some of them you can see if you read between the lines, you can also see some uh, uh, some aspects of equality between men and women. You can see how the the progression of jati going up and down. Those were also discussed in Banaspiti, but largely you can you can easily some you can summarize that. It's about tight, Swadharma is tied to Varna and Ashrama that one's in. And, um, but if you look into summary of all these three texts, or at high level summary, Swadharma is tied to what one's Varna is and what one's Ashrama is. And you can also see the idea of Varna was not always strict, right? It was malleable. Over a period of time, it became very strict. And all these, be it Bhagavad Gita, be it Mahabharata or Manushmati, they all have an anticipation of decline in Dharma. Lord Krishna says, Yada Yadi Dharma Seglani Bhavati Bharata. He also talks about what happens in Varna Shankrama and all those things. Mahabharata goes about that. So there was a lot of discussions about what happens and then this entire chapter on Apad, Apad Dharma Parvan. And ma, ma, same thing with Manushmati. So, but overall, we can summarize safely that once Vadharma is tied to once Varna and once Varna the idea of Varna is, has not been static, has not been strict all along. Now let's move into the individualistic society. How does an individualist society look, right? What, what is interest, what, what is significantly different here? Here, <clears throat> we see it's more about rights and less about responsibilities. This is a discussion about starts with me, my rights and my entitlements, right? My rights are the most important aspect of this. And whereas, like you know, when you look at when you when you look into our Dharma Shastras or, or, or the progression of the um, uh, over, over over a period of time, you look at it, it's been largely responsibility spread. What is the responsibility of the Brahmana? What is the responsibility of of a Kshatriya? What's the responsibility of a Vaishya? What's the responsibility of a Shudra? And what is the responsibility of the Grihastha? What's the responsibility of a, a, a hermit? Like all those things are about what one should, one, one is supposed to do. So it's all about one's responsibilities. But 
modern societies, we are becoming more and more about what are my rights? What am I entitled with? What I need this? I, I, I'm owed this. I have to be provided this. So that's a that's a significant uh, difference in the in the in viewpoints. But even in the societies, there's a generic understanding of rewards, right? There may be a question of uh, I may I need more or I'm I intend to get more. But there is a generic understanding of if I do my work, I'll get rewarded. Or rather, if I don't do it, I may not get rewarded, right? And then the question is more about rewards versus uh, you know carrot versus uh, punishment, uh, right? Uh, rewards versus risk. And the question is more about legal or illegal. It's not about moral, ethical. It's more about legal or illegal. And as long as one is, and, and even in, in legal and illegal, you know, depending on how uh, how it is interpreted, how it is portrayed, how it is uh, um, argued, and whatnot, it's it's a, it's a question of like you know, one, was one is one is one is proven guilty or not, right? Ultimately, that's what matters. And uh, while Dharma Shastras they were all leading towards the eternal happiness, towards moksha. The, the, the individualist society is more about current happiness. It optimizes for happiness now, right now, rather than eternal happiness, but it's, it's of a, more of a local happiness. So that's a very high level summary of what an individualistic or self-centered society looks like. And let's discuss or let's, let's see if we can find how, how we can find Swadharma in such society, right? Here, let's see if we can still get the help from Shastras. This is where we have to um, do a little bit of reading between the lines, right? And uh, we can see some examples from Shastras as well. Uh, when I say reading between lines, for example, though Manushmuti is like, you know, uh, very static and, and very, very pedantic about uh, the Varnasma and, you know, in, in one of the verses, like when, when, when it discusses about all the um, um, karmas that needs to be done, all the 16 samskaras need to be done for a boy, they also say they needs to be done for women, right? While it, the immediate verse changes into uh, marriage and upanayana is very similar, but you can see that there is an idea of equality there between men and women, at least like it was it was trying to say that, right? Similarly, when you're looking into Manushmati, very early on, there's, there's the tone of the discussion is different more about what is dharma and then and then you know how desire is desire is the root cause for the work and similarly the last chapter is more about philosophical discussion and all in between is all about like very rigid uh, discussions and rules but but the first and last chapter particularly the last chapter is more about uh, philosophical pursuits and how it goes towards uh, uh, um, um, liberation right so so you can see if you can read between the lines maybe the shastras can help and then let's see some more examples, more more specific examples, right? Uh, further uh, in 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 later chapter in uh, in um, uh, Manushmati, he talks about how Vishwamitra proceeds to eat the haunch of a dog, right? You, you know, it is it is discussing about uh, what a brahmana can do at the time of distress. So that is here, even though Vishwamitra, who knows, who's an expert in right and wrong and knows everything, but when hungry, he goes to the extent of eating. A dog's meat right? or an unclean uh, filth meat. Similarly, <clears throat> you can you can take a another example. Satyam Danam. Uh, this is this is the uh, example of uh, this is the example in Exa Prashna. Then Yudhishthira when asked about who is the Brahmana and, and you know he clearly says it's not the birth but it's more about the qualities. Satyam Danam, Kshamak, Silam, uh, Dhamo, Grana, all those things. So uh, and you know these are all a kind of an examples of um, how one can find this with dharma uh, if you if you if you look deeply if you read between the lines or if you look if you poke further and, and then if you're open to finding these kind of gems uh, gems you can find an answer right and of course uh, we have the whole charvaka here uh, where you know all these all these rules are out yavat jivet sukham jivet grinam runam krutva grutam pipet so that's that's also uh, an accepted an old tradition right like it's part of the indic knowledge system and uh, having having prioritizing one's happiness going with one's pratyaksha rejecting all the shrutis that was an acceptable way of life 
whether it's sustainable or not, that's an interesting thing. But if you look at it, a Charvaka's viewpoint is very similar, or in fact, like an individualistic or a modern society is very similar to Charvaka viewpoint, right? <clears throat> Most of us have EMIs and credit cards and whatnot. That's what we are doing. We are, we are getting into debts for our immediate happiness. And then we don't worry about what's out after death. Once we are done, we are done. Right. So again, so this is just an example of whether we can find Swadharma or find, we can find, we can, we can lean into Shastras to find Swadharma in this, in this, in these kind of societies. Right. However, we have to have, we have to watch out for, it's not going to be an easy task finding it. Like for example, what are some of the cautions here? We should not try to reinvent the wheel. Most of the questions that we are facing or even seemingly a modern question or a modern problem, it is most likely that it has been discussed. For example, I want to, I want to, uh, I want to remind this again, go back to the extra Prashna conversation, right? I want to remind the audience. So extra is asking, right? What is most wonderful? The Nidusha answers, Day after day, countless creatures are going to the abode of Yama. People die. Yet those that remain behind believe themselves to be immortal. What can be more wonderful than this? We see impermanence. We see death on and on, on everywhere. However, we think we are somehow we think we are immortal. And these were these. This is how the modern society is. But this question being asked thousands of years ago still relevant what i'm trying to say is that that even though this problem might seem more modern or new it's highly likely that this has been discussed and been answered or at least been attempted to be answered by our shastras we have to be open-minded and we have to be we will be willing to look into the shastras for answers yudhishtha further says argument leads to no certain conclusion the shrutis are different from one another there is not even one Rishi whose opinion can be accepted by all. The truth about religion, the truth about Dharma and Karma is hidden, is hidden in caves. Therefore, that alone is the path with, along which the great have trod. Right? Go follow the follow Dharma. However, Yudhishthira was clear that there is not a single answer, a single path. So we have to be we have to be mindful of that one. When we look into Shastra, it's good to be open-minded. Oftentimes, we take we tend we tend to take things literally, right? whether this way or that way. Right? It's easy to say that oh no, this has to be like this. Manushmati said that, so the 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 varnas have to be cast in stone, and then you know um, from Purusha's mouth, Brahmana was born, and Purusha's foot, and you know somebody else was born. born. So you, you have to follow that. That's one way to look at it. The other way is like extremely like you know oh no, how can Manushmati be so like um, um, so uh, uh, discriminatory and let's reject it right so instead of taking to these two different kind of views let's try to read between the lines let's try to be more open-minded and try to find these answers and the more and more we, we we lean into that more and more it's possible that we have an answer and with that i thank you for your time thank you for listening enjoy the rest of the conference thank you